Welcome again to another episode. My name is Hardy Rupan and I am the man in the wild. In today's episode, we are going to learn how to make a fishing rod out of bamboo. Stay tuned. Please consider subscribing to support my channel. Today, we will be using some of these hedge bamboos to make some fishing rods. Locally called Chinese bamboo, this bamboo is usually used in Trinidad to make hedge. They are usually not found in the wild. The slender stalk of the Chinese or hedge bamboo is very flexible and ideal for making fishing rods. When using this bamboo for making fishing rod, selecting the right stalk makes all the difference. A well matured bamboo makes the best fishing rods. This stalk that we see here is not fully matured. We can tell because the branches has now started developing. This stalk on the other hand we can tell is a mature stock as it has well-developed branches. And this stock has no branches. It is a very young, soft stock and will not work as well as this mature stock would. These stocks are all well-matured. They will all make wonderful fishing rods. It's a beautiful sunny day. Let's cut some fishing rods. These stems are too soft and young. I will have to look for some more mature stems here. These are the bamboo stalks we need. The bushy, well matured stalks. I will use my pruning shears to cut the bamboo inside of the hedge. Selecting and cutting the bamboo is the first step. In the next step, we will trim off all the branches from the main stalk, taking extra caution not to damage the main stalk. Don't forget to like and comment. Have you ever made a bamboo fishing rod?
the rod will now be trimmed to its required length. Our fishing rod is beginning to take shape. We will now whittle all the joints smoothly to get rid of the sharp jagged edges. We can now mount the fishing line on these rods as they are ready. We have cut and cleaned the bamboo stalks. We have smoothened the joints and left them a couple of days to dry. They are now much lighter and stronger. The next step will be to attach the lines to these fishing poles. To mount the rod, I usually use between a 14 to 24 pound tested line. Today, I'll be using a 24 pound tested line. I will start by making a half hitch nut on the end of this line. You can make any nut that you are comfortable with. The line is then attached to the rod. I usually attach the line approximately two thirds the length down the rod. I would use a double half hitch to attach the line to the rod. But you can use any nut you are comfortable with. The reason we attach the line this far down the rod is in case a large fish would grab the rod and it breaks. The fish will not be able to escape as the line is attached further down the rod and you can simply hold on to the line and pull the fish in. Once the line is securely attached to the rod, you are ready for the next step. In the next step, we will slowly 
twist the line around the rod a few times until we get to the end of the rod. We will now cut a notch at the end of the rod so the line can slit in between. The line has been slitted tightly into the groove and now we will tie off the end. The technique I have found best for tying off the end of the rod is as follows. I will twist the line and place it over the end of the rod and then draw it tightly. I would repeat this process of twist and insert over the end approximately four times. And that's it, the line is now secured to the end of the rod. I will then measure and cut the line approximately 3 inches longer than the length of the rod or approximately one finger length beyond the bottom of the rod. For the next step we will need a bobber or floater. I'm using a piece that's cut out from an old flip-flop or as we call them in Trinidad, a rubber slippers. We'd also need a toothpick. And we will also need a sewing needle. Start this process by treading the line through the eye of the needle. Then insert the needle the float. You can use a solid object to help push the needle through the float. Once the needle passes through the float, the line will follow. For the next step, the toothpick is inserted through the hole with the line. This aids in keeping the float taut on the line. I will then cut the toothpick, leaving a small projection to the top and bottom for if it is ever needed to be removed. I will then attach a brass pin and swivel to a gauged number 20 hook. This is what it looks like. 
the brass pennant swivel adds a little weight to the end of the line. It makes it easy for you to change the hook and it will not rust. For the next step, the hook is attached to the end of the rod and the line is then tied to the eye of the swivel. I will be using a double half hitch with a nut on the end of the line. You can use any nut you find comfortable. Once the nut is tied, you can cut off the excess at the end of the line. The rod is now ready to be used. You simply have to unhook the hook from the bottom of the rod, adjust the float, add your bait, and start fishing. And when you're through, just remove any excess bait that you may have on the hook and reattach the hook to the bottom of the rod. And that is our completed rod. Let's try catching some fish with the rods. If you would like to see us catch more fish, I would leave a link in the description for one of our fishing videos. Finding bait is the next step. Earthworms is an excellent bait for catching cuscrow. The first fish is caught by showing. And another. Cuscarab is the most common fish found in the Trinidad River. The technique is simple. Place bait on the hook. Place the hook in the water. Wait for a bite and then pull. Another fish for the bucket. This is the average size of the cusp rub found in Trinidad. They can grow to twice the size if they find perfect condition. Cuscarub has golden fins and black spots on their thighs. If you would like to see us catch more fish, I would leave a link in the description for one of our fishing videos. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to support my channel.